The blockchain space is one of the most exciting fields for developers to start their careers. Being such a game-changing technology, it's positioned for exponential growth in the coming years. But how do you get started in this field if you're an experienced developer already and don't know blockchain or you're just starting to code from scratch? Well, in this video, I want to lay out a secret strategy for landing your first blockchain job that may not be quite what you expect. This can be faster and easier than traditional methods, so I'm going to explain everything you need to know in this video today as a blockchain developer myself who's helped countless people get started in this industry. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you wanna become a blockchain master and take action on everything I'm talking about in this video, I can show you how to become a blockchain developer step-by-step -step, to finish over at dappadiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's talk about this secret strategy for landing your first blockchain developer job that may not be what you expect. So let's first outline the traditional way that most people go about this. So basically it goes like this. Once they've got the skills, then they've created some type of portfolio project and built up a great resume. Then they start applying for jobs on just like job posting websites. Usually in volume, you have to apply for a lot of jobs before you start getting interviews. They send out tons of resumes. They go through a lot of these different interviews and probably some coding challenges. In pursuit of full-time jobs, they can quit whatever they're doing now and then go full-time into Web 3.0, crypto, and blockchain. Now, this is a fine strategy. It's one that I've talked about quite a bit on my YouTube channel. It works. However, I wanna propose an alternative that's less obvious, that's more of a secret, that might be more effective depending on where you're starting from and what your goals are. And that basically is to slowly scale your way into Web 3.0 rather than making the switch all at once. That's essentially what I did when I first became a developer. Again, a little bit about my story in case you're not familiar. I was already a developer before I got into blockchain, but you know, I'm a self-taught developer. I didn't go to school for computer science. I didn't go to a coding bootcamp. In fact, I got rejected from coding bootcamp and had to teach myself on my own and figure out how to break in the industry. And I didn't really know any of the developers. So trust me, I've done this. I've helped lots of other people do exactly what I'm talking about. It works. So what are some of the benefits? Well, you can get results faster. There's less risk for you. There's less risk for the person who's potentially going to hire you. And therefore, it's easier to get started. So what does this practically look like? Well, if you're going to slowly scale your way into Web 3.0, rather than just boom, making the switch all at once, that basically looks like taking on part-time freelance work and then transitioning that into something full-time later. Now, before you object and say, hey, I don't necessarily like the idea of like feast or famine freelancing, don't worry, you don't have to dedicate your entire life to becoming a full-time freelancer, but you can use this tactic to just get your foot in the door and get started in the industry. Because whether you're an experienced developer already or you're starting from scratch, you have an inherent problem on your hands, which is you don't have that specific industry experience and somebody has to take a chance on you. And this is a much lower risk for those types of people, especially if they're US-based companies. They have to worry about payroll taxes or unemployment benefits if they have to eventually like fire you or something like that or you got laid off. It's way less risk in their eyes. And it's also way less risk for you because if you already have some source of income, you don't have to quit that source of income. You don't have to quit that job or whatever it is in order to make this switch. You can start doing this on the side. All right, so with that being said, let me outline the entire process started from square one all the way to the end destination, which is full-time in Web 3.0, so the entire transition process. So step one just looks like finding some type of you know part-time freelance position. I'll talk in a minute about how to actually find that type of thing but what you want to look for is something that's you know pretty part-time, somewhere in the 10 to 20 hour per week range. Because this is something most people, you know, can realistically do if they have some other type of full night commitment, especially if you leverage your nights and weekends, or maybe you have a flexible remote job already and you could sort of shoehorn the hours in around your current commitments. That would be awesome too. And again, this is exactly what I did when I first got my first paying work as a developer. You know, I found a mentor who was a freelancer and I just took on overflow work for them. I learned a ton through this process. I got real world experience and it only took roughly 10 to 15 hours of billable time per week. Now, another reason you want to keep your hours pretty low in this stage is that you kind of want to under promise and over deliver. Okay. If they expect 10 to 15 hours from you, maybe you're putting in more time than that researching on how to do your tasks 
and leveling up your skills so that you can actually provide that value. There's of course gonna be some gray area and what you can and can't build for in this case, but I would err on the side of caution and spend more time outside of this getting your skills up so that you can you know, really fulfill on what you're expected to do. Okay, so once you've got that step finished and you've got that base of 10 to 15 hours of freelance work under your belt for a few months, well, first of all, it's time to congratulate yourself because now you are a professional developer. You've accomplished a massive milestone. Okay, it's time to congratulate yourself. You're not full time yet. That's okay, but you have real world experience, which is what you need to move on to the next step. So you have a couple of options. One is now you can pursue a full time role with some of the more traditional methods, and it's going to be way easier in this case, or you can add to your freelancing book of business. So either way, you know, after this step, you can quit whatever you're doing now and transition full time into Web 3.0. Now, what are a couple ways to do this? So if you're a freelancer already working for somebody, there's a potential that you can convert whatever you're doing into a full time role with a couple different strategies. So if you start off freelance and they're happy with your work, you know, you might be able to just upgrade into becoming a full-time employee, like a, a salaried employee, okay? Because if they see what you can do and you've already met that test for months and they like your work and they want you to grow, they're more likely to invest in you than finding somebody else, you know, just an internal hire that they have to take a risk on somebody else, okay? And even if you can't become an official employee, you know, you might be able to just scale your freelancing hours up to 30 hours per week or more. And if you have a healthy hourly rate, that's easily a nice full-time income, and then boom, you're a full-time blockchain developer. Now, another thing you can do is apply for their full-time job, like I was saying a second ago, through the traditional methods. You could just start applying. If you know anybody uh, who's hiring blockchain developers, maybe you've had some interactions now that you're in this role, you could find an in, in somewhere where you can make, you know, go through the app, normal application process and the interview process. And this will be much easier in this case if you have real world experience rather than starting from scratch and not have any real world experience, even if you're an experienced developer already. Okay. Or lastly, another way is you can just continue building your freelance book of business. If you have 10 to 15 hours per week in one role, then you might be able to find another, you know, freelancing thing for another 15 to 20 hours a week per more and then add those together. And that would be definitely a full-time freelancing income. And now you have multiple streams of income, which means a little less risk for you if one of the, something happens to one of those sources. And if you watch my video that I made a couple months ago about how to basically make $10,000 a month per more as a blockchain developer, I outlined that in that video where basically you can kind of just keep swapping these things out and then increasing your rates and moving around freelance jobs until you're making a quite a healthy income as a developer. But no matter which of these three things you decide to do, whether it's upgrade at your current role, apply for a completely new full-time job, or find an additional freelancing income source, you're at the point where you can quit your other role, your other job, your other source of income, and now you're 100% full-time Web 3.0. All right, so lastly, as promised, I'm gonna answer the question, how do you even find your first freelancing roles? Well, there's a lot of different ways to do this. Unfortunately, in this video, I don't have time to make a complete masterclass on how to become a freelance developer. If that's something that you're interested in, definitely leave me a comment down in the comment section below so I know to you know make a video on like that if enough people want to see it. But the easiest way is to just get on a website like Upwork.com, okay? You can create a profile on here and then start bidding on jobs that get posted. Now, when you first get started, you're going to have a little bit of a problem with a blank profile with no reputation. So the easiest way to get past that is to find a really small, you know, job that doesn't pay very much, uh, where someone's willing to take a chance on you. Now you need a portfolio in order to do this, but you can work for a very reduced rate just to get something done fast so that you can seed that profile. And then that will give you the confidence and the reputation that you need to start bidding on other jobs that see that you actually have feedback on your profile. Okay. Now I occasionally do see, uh, you know, other jobs listed on upwork.com with other freelancers that want to hire other freelancers. Again, that's kind of how I got started, not through this website, but that was the model that I chose. That worked out pretty well. Those opportunities do exist. Definitely look out for those if you haven't already. But on top of this, there's lots of other you know, freelancing websites. You could just get on Google and look at them that basically do the same type of thing as Upwork. There are crypto specific ones that you can find as well. And then if you want to continue pursuing freelance over the long term, then one of the best ways to do that is to build up some type of social media presence, especially like LinkedIn or Twitter we are kind of posting in content regularly, educating others and talking about what you're building to build up that and then also a referral network, which will be a huge asset to you over time. But those are really bonuses. Again, if, you're, if your goal is just to break in, use freelance as a short-term strategy to get experience and then convert that into a full-time role somewhere else, this should definitely be enough to get you started. All right, so that's an overview of this lesser known secret strategy for getting your first blockchain job.
So I hope you like this video. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so the more people learn about blockchain. And if you want to go for the throat and take action on exactly what I'm talking about in this video today, then of course you need the technical skills and the portfolio in order to pull this off. So I can show you how to do that step by step from start to finish over at adaptiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. Okay, you really don't have to be an expert to get started today. Again, I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapper Diversity.